Hey everyone and welcome back to the Summer of Carnage right here on the Venom Vlog. And today we have some news that came out of NYCC New York Comic Con regarding Venom. So I want to talk about it and both of these pieces of news are coming from Newsarama. So I'll put links to them down below so you can go check out the articles in full and read about this other stuff that I'm not going to cover. We have obviously uh, this new line that's coming out called Marvel's The End, which is a return actually of an old line they did a while back. Uh, I think X-Men The End was probably the longest running one and that was like uh, by Chris Claremont and it was him writing his definitive ending of the X-Men. And it was was pretty cool because in that one you found out that Gambit was like a clone of Mr. Sinister and he had been the whole time but he like that's why his eyes looked the way they did uh, but he broke away from the programming and got loose and then you know became his own individual at some point and just you know forgot all about it I guess or something and uh, yeah it was it was kind of neat it was it was uh, a little weird and convoluted at times uh, but ultimately it was definitely his send off to X-Men and they did like the Hulk the end I think was the first big one they did and they did a couple other characters I don't think they ever did Spider-Man or or like Captain America or any of those characters. Maybe they did later on. I don't remember. Um, but uh, here, oh, it looks like we're going to get Captain America here. It says there's six new one-shots that will tell the last adventures of Captain America, Doctor Strange, Miles Morales, Venom, Captain Marvel, and Deadpool. Um, the Deadpool one will probably be kind of fun. I wonder who's going to write that one. Um, and Miles Morales, that's cool that they're going to do Miles. I don't think they've done Peter Parker at the end or Spider-Man the end, though. Um, so we have Captain, Mar Captain Marvel here, uh, The End by Kelly Thompson and George Ajanti. Um, we also have Doctor Strange, The End here by Leah Williams and Felipe Andrade. And then we have Miles Morales, The End by, oh, Solid and Aquaman. So, okay, that's, I, uh, I guess, um, I mean, he's doing okay, I guess, on the new book. I, I only read like one or two issues of his run. Um, and then I, I've read the Absolute Carnage stuff. And the first issue I liked a lot. The second issue was kind of meh so i'm hoping the third issue brings it all home but uh yeah i don't know that's that's fine um eric larson is is writing and drawing captain america that's uh awesome i guess uh, i'm not i've never been a big eric larson fan i mean i like his some of his venom stuff and his spider-man work a little bit after uh mcfarlane left the book but for the most part i'm not a big fan of his stuff i, I don't think i'm not a savage dragon fan i'm not a, a big fan of a lot of his work and uh, and his art style doesn't really do much for me, unfortunately. But maybe one of you guys will feel differently and you'll be excited about that book. Uh, Deadpool The End is written by Joe Kelly. Oh, that's great. Maybe I will pick that up then. I'm not a big Deadpool fan, but um, I like Joe Kelly. He's written some really fun stuff. Uh, and then here we have Venom The End uh, by Adam Warren and artist Chumba. The final Venom story. The alien symbiote who bonded with Eddie, Bro Eddie Brock has been through a lot, but not nearly as much as he has coming. In a tale that literally spans over a trillion years, Venom travels the length of space and time as the last defender of life in the universe. And check out this cover. This is pretty wild stuff. Um, he's got like a DNA strand or something on his chest. No longer the Venom or Spider symbol. He's, his hand is like a gun. Look at that. It's like formed into like a gun with tentacles. Uh, so who knows what kind of host he has in the future to look like that. Uh, that's crazy. Um, yeah, this is going to be a neat book. I always thought, like, because I was thinking of ideas once for a Venom the End story back when they were doing those end books. And that was, this funny, the great minds think alike, because I was like, if you're going to do Venom the End, you can't really do it through Eddie Brock's POV. You have to do it through the symbiote's POV. And the symbiote is probably going to way outlive Eddie Brock. Like, Eddie Brock will be a blip of its lifespan, probably. So will it even remember Eddie Brock? And and how will it remember Eddie Brock? Will it remember Eddie Brock as the one he screwed, you know, the symbiote screwed over the most? You know, what's it going to be? So I like that Donny Cates is not writing this one, to be honest with you. Because, uh, I, I don't know, maybe because Donny's like, you know what, I got, uh, the end is like a fictional ending. I still have a ton of story to tell on my stuff. And I don't want that, the end, to feel like a definitive ending end to what I'm writing, I want the the ending I end up writing be the definitive end. That's probably why he did it, which I completely agree with, if that's the case. Because, yeah, you don't want to be like, oh, he wrote this, so this must be how he envisions the suit ending uh, its lifespan. And that's probably not true. Donnie probably has a ton of other ideas, uh, as we'll go over in the next uh, the next article here. But, uh, yeah, Venom the End, I'm very excited about it. It's coming out, I think they said March of next year, so or January of next year. So we got a little bit of time before they come in, but, of course, once once it comes out, I will review it. This will probably end up in our season four. So when we're talking about Flash Thompson, when this comes out, we'll probably review it at that time because that's that's the storylines we're going to be talking about around then. So that's uh, one article. So I'll put a link to this down below so you can read more about Marvel's The End. If you have any thoughts about it, let me know in the comments down below. And then let's check out the other article, which is NYCC Panel 2019, Marvel's Next Big Thing. 
um, and this is by Pierce Lydon, uh, Lydon, and uh, Pierce basically did a Twitter update, so or like constant updates. So as they were watching the the panel at New York, or maybe on their you know uh, camera or on their uh, PC or something or laptop, because I think this was live streamed maybe, because um, Marvel has it up on their website too. So who knows how Pierce got this information? Maybe just sitting there in the audience, which would be great. Uh, but uh, they covered this panel and they talked about everything that was discussed. Now, granted. Not everything at the panel we're going to talk about because it deals with Al Ewing and like what he's doing with Immortal Hulk. And uh, Nick Klein uh, was there to announce his new book with Donnie Cates, which we'll talk briefly about because I think it's going to be relevant at some point. Uh, and Dan Slott and C.C. Sobolski, which is funny. And the first thing I thought of, especially in this day and age, I'm like, wow, look at this diverse panel of uh, five white guys telling you <laughs> what all the cool things Marvel's doing in the future. It's like, oh, man, I bet you... I bet you they were like, oh, man, we couldn't get anyone else on this panel because, uh, yeah, I mean, or I don't know. Why isn't there any female writers that are leading the way or having big event books or anything? Um, I don't know. Maybe uh, maybe there's just uh, too much of a boys club going on in some of these companies, which, you know, makes sense, I guess. And then the big thing they talk about first is a book called Incoming, which is an 80 page special coming out that's going to end the year with like a murder mystery, which I'm kind of like, eh. Anytime Marvel tries to do a murder mystery, they don't really do a good job. Like the Gene DeWolf stuff, the the side personal stuff that took place in certain books uh, by really talented writers, those were always great. But incoming, being an event thing, it just, it's, I don't know, it's, it comes across really lame. Um, and Dan Slott and Al Ewing are writing part of the main story. I mean, Al Ewing's doing great on Immortal Hulk, but some of his other stuff has been really mostly miss. It's been hit or miss, but mostly miss for me. Um, and Dan Slott, I like his Spider-Man run, but I'm not really enjoying what he's done with Fantastic Four. Um, Iron Man intrigues me a little bit because they're doing that Iron Man 2020 thing, which they talk about in here. But uh, them writing a murder mystery is just not really like, I don't know, I'm not very interested in that. Um, but they did say that I have to pick up Incoming now so we can talk about it on the show. Because according to Donnie Cates here, Incoming has a very integral piece of absolute carnage. Uh, ellipses, a bit of the fallout. So I guess some of the fallout of Absolute Carnage is going to be dealt with in Cates' story, because I guess all these writers are going to write short pages uh, or small pages for uh, incoming number one. Um, looks like Humberto Ramos is doing some of the artwork. That's fantastic. I love this stuff. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'll probably pick this up. It's probably going to be like a, a $7.99 or $9.99 book, most likely. Uh, and uh, and I'm not going to love that, especially considering I'm only buying it to review like four pages of of uh which you know donny cates stuff so i may just buy the the digital copy because at least that might come with the director's cut version and have extra stuff in it and i may not give out a digital code for that one because i may not buy the physical one so we'll we'll figure that out donny cates also mentioned that he is going to be you know wrapping up his silver surfer black run and if you want more information on null and learn more about null's past and his history definitely pick this book up once the final issue comes out we'll do like a discussion video on all five issues but i would recommend it i like it Tra uh, the artist trad moore is doing a really crazy job the art is <laughs> just insane and uh and i wouldn't expect anything less from trad he's done some great stuff over his career so uh pick it up it's good it's very weird uh donnie said it's kind of like a love letter his love letter to parable which is this amazing stan lee uh book with mobius when they did silver surfer it was like a two-part story so uh yeah i mean of course, Donnie Cates is going to be like, yeah, I, I want to write stuff on the level of Stan Lee and, and, and have stuff like on the level of Mobius and everything. It's like, I don't know, but whatever. Good for him. It's, it's, it's a pretty good book, so I'm not going to dog him for it. It's good to dream big, kids. Um, then also he's talked about how he's wrapping up his Guardians of the Galaxy run with issue 12. I haven't read any of that yet. I think I, well, I read the first issue. Um, it was okay. I, I'm not a big fan of the Cosmic Ghost Rider being in the main Marvel Universe, but it, it's still, it's an okay book. Um, yeah, I don't know. I like the Guardians of the Galaxy movie, and I like the Annihilation series uh, by Abnett and Lanning, but um, beyond that, I haven't really got into Guardians of the Galaxy in the comic books. Uh, so then we move on to Absolute Carnage here. Uh, I never in a million years thought you would embrace a serial killer with a nuclear bomb attached. I rarely back out of a promise that I make, and the fight between Dark Carnage and Volk is huge. I guess he's calling Venom Hulk Volk, which uh, I'm, I don't think you're ever going to hear me say that past this one video um because it sounds dumb the uh but the artwork there Roy ryan segment looks great and it looks like uh look at him it's eddie is picking up captain america's shield is that what i'm seeing there oh man jeez talk about elevating talk about big shoes to fill man 
Can Eddie Brock do it? I don't know. We'll find out. So there's some of his Guardians of the Galaxy. That's his cover. Uh, Kate says that the end of Absolute Carnage is really the end of the first part of a large story that he's telling, which, of course, we knew. Uh, he talked about, you know, to ad nauseum on his podcast, I think, about how he went to uh, a summit of writers for Marvel, and it was his turn to go, and he pitched a Venom story, and it just kept going on and on and on and on, and he pitched, like, I don't know, he said something like four or five years worth of storylines, and he still had more, like, in his head, so, uh, yeah, he's not going anywhere, <laughs> so I'm just, I'm strapping in for his run, but I, I kind of figured Absolute Carnage would kind of be, like, his Sinestro Core War, and he's going to build to Null, and Null's going to be, like, his Blackest Night, and that'll probably be in another, you know, year or two, probably two years, um, or maybe he'll time it to when the Venom movie comes out to optimize, you know, his, you know, like to get co optimized coverage and press coverage. I don't know. We'll see. But uh, so we'll, we're going to hear it. Well, I'm sure we'll hear about it at some point. Uh, he does say that Venom Island, though, is a direct ramification of Absolute Carnage and that issue 20 of Venom will be setting up Venom Island and more of that book going forward. And Venom Island will be a return to the Amazing Spider-Man Island from ASM 347, from Amazing Spider-Man 347. So as, as I said before in previous videos, it looks like they're going to go back to that island uh, that he was on when he was stranded there after he thought he killed Spider-Man, and they're going to tell some story there. But he did say this deals with direct ramification, so I'm, I thought it was going to be like they go to the island and it's current day, but then most of the story is told in flashback, and it's Eddie learning about stuff that the symbiote made him do on the island. I thought that was going to be the story, but maybe it's all present day, so that kind of surprises me. So because I'm surprised, I'm a little bit more intrigued. I thought it was going to be a mostly a flashback story, but it looks like it might be a, you know, a setting forward the next arc story. So uh, I'm curious. I'm curious to see what Venom Island really means. Um, and then Kate's also said he's excited to work with Mark Bagley, which of course, who wouldn't be? I mean, that's awesome that Mark Bagley is going to do this Venom Island story. And that is uh, grounds enough for me to buy it anyway. Cause I was wondering, I was like, who's going to fill in for, uh, you know, Ryan Stegman, because after Absolute Carnage, he's probably going to take like four or five months off and catch, you know, to catch up on his work and maybe take a month off and just, you know, rest or something. Uh, or knowing him, he'll probably he just he's a grinder, man. He's a worker. He'll probably just take like a day or two off and then go back to work. So he's probably drawing the next thing that Donnie Kate's working on. So this would be cool because Mark Bagley's still fast. Even for his age, he's doing really well and pumping out books. So maybe they can do this Venom Island thing over the course of like four or five or maybe even six issues. And that'll give uh, you know, Ryan Stegman enough time to catch up so we get back to uh, monthly Stegman stuff. Because uh, I was thinking, oh, maybe they'll bring Aban Coelho or someone in uh, to fill in. But I'm happy. I like Aban. He's amazing. But it'll be cool to have uh, Mark Bagley on to do this storyline, especially considering the timeline it's set during the, like that 90s storyline. Um, that's fantastic. You know, a storyline that he drew some of. I think Eric Larson drew some of as well. So, um, yeah. And then they talk more about Iron Man 2020. Uh, which is cool that they're going to do that. I actually think that's a great idea. I love that Machine Man miniseries that introduced him. Uh, and that was one of my first introductions to uh, those characters um, back uh, when I was a kid. So, yeah. So there's a lot of cool stuff coming up. Uh, Immortal Hulk is going to be, you know, coming up to issue 25. They talked about a lot of things there. And then they also announced that there's going to be a prequel to Earth X called Marvel's X by Alex Ross, Jim Kruger, and Welby on the uh, art, I think. So... Yeah, and then some Fantastic Four, Valkyrie stuff. There's a lot, of, a lot of other things going on. So, yeah, and then they, they ended the panel with Donny Cates announcing that he is going to be the new writer of Thor, which is right here. The end of Aaron's run will feature an issue that has all the past Thor collaborations. Joining him for a celebratory issue, Donny Cates says that he's always had a dream to work on two characters. One was Venom. And the other is Thor. And I feel like eventually he's going to get another book and he's going to go, I've always dreamed of working on three characters, Venom, Thor, and Wolverine or whatever, you know, and I'm sure he'll go down the line at some point, but uh, that's fine. I'm glad he's a, he's clearly a big fan and I couldn't be happier for a fan who is writing comics because that's who you really want writing the comics. I just, I just feel like sometimes this stuff comes across a, uh, comes across a little fan fiction-y, like too much so. I know that's ultimately what you're doing when you become a writer. You're kind of doing a fan fic in a way, but uh, there's a line, and I feel like sometimes Donny Kate slips into the fan fic line too far and, and not enough into like the proper, you know, structured things. Uh, but, you know, clearly he's killing it with a lot of stuff he's working on so uh, that's just my you know humble opinion i'm very critical of a lot of things if you think i'm hard on donny cates on his writing you should see me on my own writing when i was self-editing and editing other people's stuff when i was working in comics um I'm, I'm a pretty tough 
editor, man. I'll be honest with you. <laughs> it doesn't mean I'm right. It does not mean I'm right. Just because I have an opinion on something or think something should be structured a certain way does not make me right about it. It is. It all comes down to opinion and gut feeling. And sometimes you're, you know, I can be wrong. Absolutely. Um, but uh, yeah, I clearly am in Donny Kate's case because a lot of people love his stuff. I like his stuff. I just don't love his stuff too much as everyone else does. But, you know, I might pick up this Thor run or some of it because I have no doubt in my mind he's going to tie it into Venom somehow. And I have no doubt in my mind that the next big crossover with Venom, uh, you know, when they do the Null storyline, I'm 100% sure Thor is going to be involved. And I think that's what's, that's why they're doing this. I think Don and Keith is like, hey, if Jason Aaron's leaving Thor, can I, can I write Thor also so I can tie it into my Venom story? Because they've already tied Venom, you know, his origins in with like Beowulf and things like that. And they talked about the, you know, Jason Aaron already set up the, the God butcher with the, the, the dark sword or whatever it was. And then they touched on some of that in Conan with the Savage Avengers. So I'm pretty sure this is going to be all of that coming together. And that way you can have a Venom Thor event in like, you know, next year or the year after. So, uh, yeah, I, I'm, I may be on board for that. That could be fun. And I'm curious to see how Donny Cates will write a character like Thor uh, he says here that uh, Matt Fraction told him that a Thor book should sound like a Zeppelin album in your head, but he wants his to sound like a Norwegian black metal band. Uh, so, okay, that's cool. And he's been working on Marvel Cosmic stuff since Thanos wins. There's one more itch I need to scratch in the Cosmic stuff. We're going real big. We're going real crazy. Every issue in his event book. I hope you guys will join us. And that's kind of neat because I feel like that's a good uh, pace for Thor. If you did all these like one and done or two part stories and they're all like these big events but just told in like single issues or two issues. I just don't want like seven issue arcs or 10 issue arcs or, you know, or things like that. If it built, if it builds a bunch of one and two issue stories and that builds up to the, uh, until the Venom event happens with Thor in it, I'm guessing that that's going to happen. Um, then I'll be really happy with that run. Cause I miss the days of just one and done storylines. I think the new Wolverine book by Benjamin Percy is going to be a little bit like that, uh, or the, uh, his X-Force run or something. And that intrigues me because I just don't see writers do that anymore. Everybody writes for like omnibus, even Dan Donny Cates, his storyline feels like, Oh, it's better if you read it in omnibus form. Like before they used to say writers would write for trade. So they would tell like, you know, uh, kind of Bendis kind of helped solidify that with his decompressed writing style where it's like, Oh, this is six or eight or nine issues or whatever. And you have to buy the trade to, you know, and it feels better to read it all in a trade, like a binge of a TV show. And nowadays they're like Donny Cates and all these new guys come in with these four year plans and they're just like, it feels like they're writing for omnibuses and not even trades anymore. So you almost want to wait for the omnibus to come out before you even read the book because getting it in such small decompressed slivers just doesn't work. But at least Donny Cates is good about having things happen for the most part in each issue and that's where i think he might do good on thor at least i'm hoping and nick klein as he's a good artist so i'm curious to see uh you know kind of his art style evolve over the course of the book i also want to add this one in real quick this is marvel's ravencroft gets a major renovation this news came out i think like a day or two or something before new york comic-con but this uh, newsrama link has you know all the info on it so basically what you know marvel's going to do after absolute carnage in the aftermath is that they're going to kind of reopen Ravencroft. They're going to make it a setting for future storylines. And they're going to start off with an anthology type uh, one shot series and then go right into a mini series by Frank Thierry. So this is kind of cool because obviously I like Frank Thierry's art, uh, writing style and stuff. And uh, I like the stuff he does. And so I'm curious to see where they go with this, especially the characters they picked for this, which is really interesting. Um, announced Thursday morning. So yeah, like I said, the day before New York Comic Con. Um, writer Frank Thierry will, will write three Ruins of Ravencroft one-shots, starring Carnage, of course, uh, Sabretooth, and Dracula. <laughs> I'm so, I'm so uh, curious to see. I love that they're including Sabretooth, because obviously we're going to, you know, I'm still thinking about doing that, you know, Wolverine, Sabretooth podcast kind of thing coming up. So you might, you might see more of that information closer to Christmas or, or maybe early next year. Um, but uh, I love that. And then Dracula. I'm like, how is Dracula tied to Ravencroft? So uh, here's the descriptions and stuff. Here's the information and some images. Let's uh, start with Ruins of Ravencroft Carnage. Uh, so there's the cover art there. And it's by Frank Thierry. Artist inside of some of these books. We don't know who they are yet. They haven't announced them. Um, but uh, Carnage USA. In the aftermath of Absolute Carnage, the Marvel Universe still needs a place to treat and rehabilitate the criminally insane. And efforts to reconstruct Ravencroft are well underway. 
but Ravencroft is no ordinary facility, and untold secrets may yet be waiting to be unearthed in the, in the destruction Carnage left behind after his attack on the facility. So uh, they don't really mention Carnage, and even though it says this is focusing on him, we don't know if he's alive, we don't know what the aftermath is, uh, what his role is, where he is, if Cletus is left behind, if not, we have no idea about any of that. But apparently someone's going to renovate and reconstruct Ravencroft. I'd like it to be a superhero. I would love if Iron Man or some, you know, someone with money or wealth in the Marvel Universe who was a superhero tried to rehabilitate or rebuild this place with their money and, you know, try to up security and try to do things like that. Like, that would be great. I, I don't know if they're gonna, but I would like to see something like that because then a hero would feel responsible if anything went wrong there and that could lead to some interesting stories with you know that character and it would be cool to do so you know something like maybe Danny Rand and Iron you know or Luke Cage and, and Iron Fist decide to you know help rebuild it or something and uh and watch over it and be like the guards of it or something I don't know just find some characters that you're not doing much with and put them you know, connect them to this uh, rebuilding and I think that'd be really fun uh the history this is ruins of Ravencroft Sabretooth, um, the history of the Ravencroft Institute of the Criminal Insane has been shrouded in mystery for years, no longer in the wake of absolute carnage. The facility's past has started to unravel, and in doing so has revealed uh, hidden chapters in the lives of some of Marvel's most recognizable heroes and villains. So we're going to get a Wolverine Sabretooth connection to Ravencroft somehow. Uh, so I guess Ravencroft, they're going to you know, add in to the continuity of it that it's been around for a couple generations now. And, uh, and it, so it's kind of going to be Marvel's Arkham Asylum, I guess. And I think Frank Thierry or someone on the panel at New York Comic Con even said that. They were like, come on, let's be honest. Ravencroft is just Marvel's answer to Arkham Asylum, uh, but they haven't really done much with it. So it'll be nice to see them actually dive in. I mean, outside of the Carnage storyline, some of the one shots like Mind Bomb and stuff, they haven't really explored Ravencroft too, too much in the Marvel Universe. So this will be kind of fun. I, I like it. I like the idea of focusing on this uh, building and telling anthology stories from it. Uh, this one's intriguing, Dracula. Uh, to the men and women of the Marvel Universe, Ravencroft Institute for the Criminally Insane appeared to be a hospital devoted to the rehabilitation of society's most violent offenders. But appearances can be deceptive, and as Captain America learned the hard way, some secrets have teeth. So this is going to be a Captain America Dracula story that ties into Ravencroft somehow. So I, just the concept alone of this is so perplexing and fun and funny and goofy and weird that I'm on board 100%. And with Frank writing, I'm, I can't wait to see kind of how weird he gets with it. And then last, after all three of those one-shots come out, we have Frank Thierry and artists still to be decided on all of these books, it looks like. Um, we have Ravencroft reopened. After the hellish horrors of absolute carnage, the Ravencroft Institute has received a much-needed facelift and is open for business and a new staff, including John Jameson, looking to atone for the part he played in absolute carnage. But will Ravencroft return the mentally unstable villains of the Marvel Universe to upstanding citizens and give John the redemption he's looking for, or will they fall prey to the hospital's seemingly sinister nature? And here's that cover for that first issue right there uh ravencroft institute for the criminally insane uh that's a nice cover i actually really like that um but i i did mention this i mean it's, it feels like me and frank are sometimes maybe that's why i like him as a writer uh we feel i feel like he's on the same wavelength as me um and i'm i'm able to predict some of the stuff he does but only because i think i kind of think like him in a way like so based on what i've read of his stories um that's what it seems like because uh he did you know like the first one shot cult of carnage or whatever and i was like oh i wonder if john jameson's going to be a sleeper agent and he's going to turn on misty knight at some point turns out he did and that's what the storyline he's writing in his book um uh, with misty knight and stuff with lethal protectors and then now i was like you know in that book when i was reviewing it i was like oh i wonder if he's gonna after this if he's gonna do something with john jameson where he has to atone for the horrible things he's done because there's that line where Misty's like, dude, John, one day you're going to wake up from this and you're going to get full control of your body back and you're going to hate what you've done. And I was like, oh, that's a great line. I wonder if that's a setup for a future series. And it turns out it is. Uh, so I love this, you know, Ravencroft. Uh, you know, there's some ads here, but uh, yeah, Ravencroft 105. And then we get these three one shots that are going to come out first. I think these come out um, in maybe January or like or December or January. I can't remember, but they're coming out very soon, like in the next couple months. So I will pick them all up. Obviously, I will review them 
um, and we will re you know review the main series, the mini series, and the three one shots for sure. Um, because this will probably be all like season four stuff. So as we're talking about, um, you know, Flash Thompson and everything, it'll be nice to have these books out there because this will be more Carnage stuff we can talk about. I was worried because we're getting almost we're running out of Carnage stories to talk about. I think all we have left really is maybe an in-depth discussion of the Red Goblin story somewhere down the line, and then uh, also doing the uh, you know the 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 series that Jerry Conway did. Um, and so we'll review and discuss all those uh, you know next season on the show. But I was like, man, that's all I have for Carnage stuff besides movie news. We need more Carnage content, and so this is going to be it. It's going to fill that hole for us, uh, which is great. And then probably the Maximum Venom cartoon will have some more Carnage stuff in it as well. So uh, yeah, Ruins of Ravencroft, what do you guys think of that one? I'm very excited, and I can't wait to see what Frank does with this series. And hey, this is another late edition because I found myself, it's like a week later now after I filmed the first part of these videos and uh, and I haven't ed you know edited and posted it yet. And so I was like, all right, let's look for any other news just so I can squeeze in all the news I can that isn't movie related. So this is all comic book news, obviously. And I wanted to squeeze all this stuff in for one long video. Uh, so that's what this is. So there's plenty of stuff we're talking about in this episode. And I figured, yeah, let's do one more. I mean, it's already like a 20 minute episode as is, I think, uh, but we're going to keep going. So uh, we'll see if we get up to 30 minutes with this one but yeah this is actually this will probably be quick spider-man and venom will reunite for more fun in spider-man and venom double trouble this is a book i heard about a little while ago uh, or recently like i think like a week or two ago and i was like oh man how did that slip through my you know radar because it's coming out on november 6th uh, it's coming out very soon like in you know less than a month now and i was like how did i not hear about this and uh, apparently it's like freaky friday it's spider-man or peter parker and eddie brock switch brains or personalities and uh like freaky friday style and i'm like that's so incredibly dumb and fun at the same time and the fact that it's gonna you know kind of being uh, geared as like a kid's book in a way uh makes me interested it's written by uh, mariko tamaki and art by uh Gurihiru. and this is pretty neat stuff i mean like the art is pretty simple like i said it's kind of a kid's book and it's a fun thing to do with a kid's book, I guess. This design of Venom is neat. It looks a little bit, um, you know, very cartoony, very cartoon design. And uh, this new Double Trouble, I think it's a four-issue miniseries. Um, after becoming one of the most famous pairs of frenemies in the Marvel Universe, Spider-Man and Venom find themselves in quite a pickle when their minds are swapped. Um, I don't know. I feel like there's... I, you know, I know a lot of people frown on things where it's like, oh, it's just a Freaky Friday concept or whatever, but that sometimes does lend to really fun stories where you literally put a character in another character's shoes and they have to walk a mile in that character's shoes. And I wonder, you know, I don't know how serious this is going to get because obviously it's kind of like a kid's book, but I wonder what Peter Parker would learn spending, you know, a day or two in Eddie Brock's mind or two, in walking in his shoes. And same with Eddie Brock, you know, he might learn, you know, it might, there's there's room for self-reflection there. And like I said, I don't think this book is going to be that deep or go that deep with the characters, but you never know. It could surprise us, and there could be some fun moments there. Like, uh, you know, here's the bank robbery scene, and so having Eddie do it in Spider-Man's body without the symbiote, you know, would be interesting. And then also the symbiote would probably be able to talk to Peter Parker's mind inside Eddie's body, and that could lead to some drama and fun too. So uh, that's interesting. And then, of course, other villains will pop up, like Green Goblin here, and you'll have, you know, Spider-Man in the Venom suit in Eddie Brock's body fighting Green Goblin or something, or, or having to team up with him, you know, to fight Spider-Man or something like that. So, uh, I am don't know. It's, it, this could be a fun book. It's just a little kid's book that they're going to do. It's four issues, so I'll probably buy them. And then once all four of them come out, we'll do a discussion video on it for, like, season four. Yeah, I just wanted to throw this in here because, you know, it's, it's a slow day. I mean, I have to go to work in a little bit. Um, but, uh, yeah, October 14th, this news just came out. And um, before I leave for work, I was like, yeah, let's uh, let's talk about this real quick. And I can add this in because, I'm like I said, I'm editing the video now. I'm not going to be able to get it done before I leave for work. i got to leave in, like, 20 minutes. So uh, I'll record this. I'll throw it in there. And then maybe I'll render it later tonight. And I'll post it, you know, on, like, a you know, Tuesday or Wednesday or something like that. So let me know what you think of this also, because like I'm adding this to my other episode. So let me know what you think of this news for comic books as well. Are you going to pick up Spider-Man and Venom Double Trouble? I'd love to hear your thoughts. Um, I think it looks like a fun book, especially if you just want like some mindless fun. But I know a lot of you like purists out there who just want all serious in canon continuity storylines you might skip this one but for me i'm definitely gonna check it out and i'll give my review to you guys you know once all four issues are released so you guys let me know these are the news that i have for today the venom stuff that came out of new york comic con i'd love to hear your thoughts on them let me know down in the comments below and as always we'll continue our conversation down there i do have another idea for a video i have coming up i was gonna i was thinking about making it a venom vlog episode but it might be a seek and destroy episode 
I don't know. We'll see. Um, I just found out that one of my favorite artists of all time, someone we've talked about on the Venom vlog before, his name is Tom Lyle. He became a teacher and has taught a lot of amazing, talented people, people who are getting into the industry of art and design and stuff. And uh, he's, I just found out he suffered a brain aneurysm rupture, just like I did. And uh, he is in the hospital fighting for his life right now. And it, this broke my heart, man. I, I hate seeing news about aneurysms because I tried really hard to like speak up about aneurysms and I tweet about it sometimes, um, you know, to try to get the word out there and post about it on Instagram at times because I do want people informed because I, I hate reading about people suffering the way I suffer. And some times, or most of the cases, people have it way worse than me. At least I nowadays can, and even have been for the past couple of years, been able to integrate myself and at least seem and, 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 act quote unquote normal around people and handle things the best I can. But a lot of people don't get to. And, uh, and for that reason is why I try to speak up about it sometimes, but seeing Tom going through this now and he's in a coma, you know, post aneurysm right now fighting for his life. And uh, I heard the surgery went well, but I still don't have any more updates. The last update I heard was that a surgery went well. And I think that was from a couple days ago. So I'm really, you know, praying for him. I have him in my thoughts. And I thought since we did talk about him on the show, he drew Scarlet Spider. He's one of the first artists to draw Scarlet Spider. He, you know, drew the part of the uh, two parts of the four part storyline where Scarlet Spider beat Venom hand-to-hand -hand combat where he's like punching venom in the brain and stuff and he's like shooting the stingers in his mouth that was all tom lyle's artwork and uh, uh tom has been a big influence on me over the years and i love his stuff and so i was thinking about making a video about him but i was gonna in doing so review a comic that doesn't have venom in it it is a spider-man comic but it doesn't have venom in it so i'd love to hear your thoughts let me know down below would you like to see that as a venom vlog episode um, or would you rather see that as like a seek and destroy since it doesn't really have venom in it? It's just an artist that has drawn venom uh, a couple times. But, uh, you know, he also did that funeral pyre miniseries where it was uh, venom and Punisher and they fought that character named the pyre. Uh, so, you know, I, he has ties to venom. And I thought it would be fun to talk about a story, one of my favorite Spider-Man stories uh, that Tom also drew. It was called Beware the Rage of a Desperate Man. And it involves Hobgoblin, Demogoblin, and the son of Craven the Hunter. So if you guys are interested in seeing that in the next Venom vlog, let me know. I'll pull out those issues and we'll do something uh, special for Tom as like a you know, a love letter in a way to his art style. Um, so let me know what is down below, what you think. If you think it would be better as a Seek and Destroy episode, that's fine. Uh, but if you think it'll fit here nice at home on the Venom vlog, um, I'd love to hear your input. Thanks so much for watching the show. I'll see you all in the future. Peace.